every now and then Prime Video comes out with some pretty good content. Uh, a lot of it seems to kind of be more drifted towards their original shows, things like um, Invincible or um, uh, The Boys. Uh, th their shows are really, really good. You know, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of their other things that haven't really gone past their first or second season, like Lore. I'm a big fan of the Lore podcast, and the first season of that show was great. And every so often, they'll come out with a movie that's, you know, a hit or a miss. Um, this one, however, I'm going to say is probably a bit of a miss for me. So I'm going to talk about Jolt. It came out close to the end of last month, so it's been out for a couple of weeks now. I finally kind of brought my attention to it simply because it kind of like popped up. I was watching a lot of other things over the last couple of weeks. And then, you know, Prime started kind of pushing it a little bit more. And I was like, oh, well, what's this? And so about a week ago, I finally sat down and watched it. And it's a Kate Beckinsale action film. I don't believe it's based on anything. I think it's, it's it's meant to be its own unique story. And the premise essentially is... That Kate Beckinsale plays this person who's born with something called, like... Explosive something disorder or something explosive disorder. Basically people who are assholes makes her want to punch them like it's it's very i think it's like a real disorder i don't mean to like downplay like the disorder in and of itself i do believe it's actually like a behavioral diagnosis but i think it's this film kind of ups it and kind of makes it in like this realm where it's like a little over exaggerated in a way maybe i'm wrong maybe people like this might actually exist but essentially she's a person who like you see somebody being rude to like a waitress you go over and then you chop them in the throat which essentially isn't what people do you know even if you do have this disorder maybe if it was more directed towards you which to be fair they do portray in the film as well you know she's sitting down and there's a maitre d who's you know kind of rude and you know she's trying to control herself from kind of like you know ripping her hair out but Again, I do believe it's a over-exaggeration of the actual disorder in real life. So, the premise is that she's born with this disorder. She tries to deal with it when she's um, uh, really young, and she can't. So, the parents give her up, and she's brought into this, like, mental hospital where they try all these different ways of managing her disorder. And then, eventually, they implement something that's uh, a form of shock treatment that she essentially controls herself. And what that shock treatment is, where the concept of jolt comes from, is that she has these pads all over her, her torso, and when she feels the urge to wreak havoc on rude people, she presses a button that's attached to her wrist, and she shocks herself. And it's not a crazy shock, but she's basically pavloving herself. Which, if you don't know what that means, that's like... Um, uh, I forget the doctor's first name, but uh, the doctor who was running those experiments of shock treatment on animals. That's essentially what she's doing. So, not only is that kind of the premise of her character, but you're kind of meant to assume, you know, through some things that happened in like a flashback scene from the beginning, only lasting about like three minutes, that you're meant to get like, oh, she's tried numerous things to cope with her rage and her... Uh, her hate for normal human interaction. So she's tried, like, jujitsu and, like, rock climbing. So you're meant to draw to the conclusion that, yeah, she can fight. I'm not going to say it's fight on the level that, like, it, the movie actually gives you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they give you this kind of sense that it's going to be, like, action-packed. And it's really not. And even the few scenes that, it's are, that it is action-packed, it isn't all the way... I don't want to say believable because it's a film and it's an over-exaggeration, so it's not meant to be believable, I guess. But it's still the matter that it's kind of odd that she is almost as good as she is when if she's just a normal person with a disorder who tried to learn how to fight to fucking deal with being, you know, a person with a behavioral management problem. So the premise of the story of that is her character. 
And what the story really leads off of is that she goes on a blind date with a dude and she winds up falling in love with him. And then the dude winds up getting murdered. And you learn that the dude was in cahoots with like this gang, this high level gangster or drug kingpin or something. And so she goes on this journey to try to save him. Uh, not try to save him, try to revenge him. So that's all from like them knowing each other for like three days. Like if you want, if you did like a time jump to let me learn and like let that relationship build and maybe add a little bit more time to this film, the film's only 90 minutes long. All you needed was another 15 minutes to kind of build their relationship a little bit more. You're expecting me to accept the fact that they go on like two dates, then they bang the first night and then he sees the electrical prods and he's okay with it. So that makes her fall in love with him. And even if that was the case, she still doesn't really accept it. Like, throughout the whole film, like, she's like, you know, who killed Justin or whatever? And they're like, well, why do you care? And she was like, well, he was really nice. It's like, why don't you just, like, make it a love story? Why don't you make it, like, this thing where she actually did, like, love him? Or she actually wants to say that in some way, shape, or form. Like, make it a story where she's not just going on this rampage for a dude she dated once. Make it like an almost Romeo and Juliet kind of thing where it is a love at first sight storyline and maybe that that connection I could believe. But if you want me to believe that connection at the very beginning, which I took, I said, okay, that's the first person that she's actually able to open up to. It's the first one that she's kind of feels emotions and she kind of can connect with another human being after feeling that for so long she can't really deal with people. I for... I completely took that in and I was fully prepared to accept that as being the story but then you didn't let her fully commit to it like you didn't let the character fully commit to the idea that yes maybe she kind of fell in love at first sight maybe this person gave her such a great feeling that she could have a little bit better dialogue than just saying he was a nice guy like really like that that's where we're going with this like is he just a nice guy so you decide to kill a bunch of people for him that doesn't make any friggin' sense. So, that in and of itself is the, the full story of what the film kind of is meant to tell you. So she goes on this rampage, like, uh, the cops are chasing her, and she's getting, you know, um, she's fighting uh, bad guys left and right, and she's torturing people, and it's kind of like, she's never done any of this before, but apparently she's, she's cool with doing it now. That's why I'm okay with this being, like, the start of something. If you were meant to lead this as, say, like a... Um, uh, a launching platform for, say, a character where she's going to become something else, then okay, you could probably look at it in that angle and say, all right, this is a nice kind of build up to say maybe she's going to be like a secret agent or some like super heroine or something like that. Like maybe. And it's got a great cast too. Like it's Kate Beckinsale coming back with a vengeance. Like I love Kate Beckinsale. Almost everything she touches is gold and she looks friggin' great. She looks so good in this film. Then you have uh, Bobby Cannavale, you got uh, Laverne Cox, you got Stanley Ch uh, Tucci, you got Jay Courtney, Jay Courtney, or maybe Jai Courtney, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, it's probably Jai Courtney. Uh, I've, uh, I've seen a bunch of his things, you know, from like Jack Reacher to um, his role in um, Live Free or Die Hard, where he played uh, Bruce Willis' son, also being an insurgent, also being Captain Boomerang in the Suicide Squad. Like, Jay Courtney, to me, is like, he, he's really getting up there with his roles, and I think he's a fantastic actor, and he does really well in just about everything that I see him in. So he's in this. Of course, you know, like I said, you got Stanley Tucci. You have a really, really good lineup of actors in this film. And then it ends off with Susan Sarandon making an, making an appearance. So I feel like just because you added her at the end, there's probably going to be a sequel to this. Maybe that sequel will kind of lend a little bit more to the story. So I'm going to look forward to that if that's the case. If this is just meant to be a one-off or if it gets really poor ratings and we don't get anything else because of the fact, then, you know, that that's upsetting because just to be left with this, it, you know, it, it does deserve a little more. And the director, uh, Tanya Wexler, this is like... She doesn't do too many films. She's been active for maybe 20 years, I think. And I think the only other thing she has under her belt, really, that most people will probably know um, is Hysteria from 2011. So this is a big deal film for her, uh, being that it's on, like, Amazon. Like, unless Amazon, you know, they're, they're almost like... Um, uh, I don't want to say Netflix. It takes a lot for Netflix to really, like, get rid of something. But, you know, maybe even, like, HBO or something. Like, they, like she's not on a network that just drops something for it not being 
successful. They let it, they give it a chance. Amazon gives most things chances, uh, at least for a second season. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at Lore. Lore is a perfect example where the first season was fantastic, then the second season bombed, and they threw the whole show out. So if this gets enough recognition where you can move into a sequel, hopefully Tanya Wexler comes back and does another one, and hopefully they build on that story and add a little bit more of what you might have been missing, or maybe just make the character make a little bit more sense in whatever universe they want to set it in, or whatever story they want to set it in, I should say. Uh, if that's the case, then yes, it's worth kind of getting into to be ready for when the sequel comes out, if that's a plan. But if there is no plan for a sequel... You might be a little disappointed, you know, I'm going to say that I didn't walk away loving the film. I'm not going to sit here and highly praise it like I would, you know, other films that I have, you know, in my entries before and ones I probably do, you know, like, moving forward. But I'm not going to, like, say that it's a horrible film. It's enjoyable. It's a good watch. It's a fun watch. And it's fun to watch Kate Beckinsale again, especially doing something that isn't Underworld. You know what I mean? Like, she did 15, 16 Underworld films. It's nice to see her do something different. And hopefully this is something else that she will continue doing and they'll move forward with more films. Or maybe even a show. Maybe if, if this was a Kickstarter film that could probably move into a show, I wouldn't mind seeing this character in a show either. If that was this was meant to be, if it was meant to be a launching pad, then fine, I'll take that. But if it's not, then it's it's probably going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And maybe that's just me, but I do have some hopes for the future for this. So maybe we will get more. But if we don't, then yeah, this it's kind of it kind of falls short with what you're expecting out of it. 